This is the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of November 4th, 2022. There's an old proverb that I end up using a lot. And it says, even a broken clock is right twice a day. You know, if, if you can't decode that, it, it means essentially that no matter who you are, just random chance is going to mean that you're right about something occasionally. And it's often said about somebody that you don't like who ends up having a good point about something. And, and that proverb applies here, although I've never personally met David Zaslav, the uh, head of Warner Brothers Discovery. I've written some stuff about him, and so has a lot of the rest of the Internet. No, he's got a tough job. His job is to try to make money for his investors and, and for Discovery Networks. And he's doing that by cutting a lot of popular stuff. You know, you've probably read it, and if you, if you haven't, check out the Solid Signal blog. You know, he shelved a Batgirl movie that was essentially finished. He's canceled a lot of shows. And he's taken the HBO Max app and basically started to flood it with reality shows from Discovery. And that's not really my cup of tea. Well, the big news last week, and I'm probably not telling you something you don't know, is that the axe fell on Westworld. Westworld, the HBO series, uh, it's actually been kind of on and off for, I want to say, about six years now and has made its way through four seasons. The first season was really astoundingly good, and every season after that has sort of tried to make the world bigger and bigger and bigger and introduce bigger and bigger ideas. Well, I guess the original plan for the series was five seasons, and we'll never see season five because the show has been officially canceled by HBO. And here's a case where, like I said, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Now, you're going to read a lot of things on the Internet, if you haven't already, about how unfair this is and how Zaslav is gutting HBO Max and how the, the idea of prestige television is getting flushed down the toilet. And those are somebody else's words, not mine, by the way. In this case, I actually agree with the guy. And it's not because I didn't like season four of Westworld. There were some things about it I genuinely did like, some very thoughtful things. But if you look at the ratings for Westworld, season one, two, three, four, you can find the, the, this information with very quick Google searches. You'll see that season four's ratings were a tiny sliver of a fraction of what season one's were. And it, it begins to look like the only people who really care about Westworld are the people who write blogs about Westworld. That may seem harsh, but the truth is that the ratings were quite poor. And if you follow the trend down, season five would have been so poorly watched, so rarely watched by anybody that it would be unwise to spend the amount of money that you would be spending. Now, I've been told by other stories that the actors themselves are going to get some money for season five. But that's not the whole story. This is a show that had to have spent a ton of money on CGI and special effects. The production values were always outstanding. That I will say. But you have to ask if it would be worth it. And then it, let's just say you cut the budget to the bone and you made season five on just a shoestring, literally the least amount of money that you could possibly spend. Well, would it be worth doing because the production values have been so high for four seasons? Or would anybody else end up saying, oh, well, seasons one through four were great and season five was kind of really just not worth making and they shouldn't have made it? That's what I'm kind of thinking. You know, when I think of Westworld, I think of two other shows that had a similar trajectory. Lost and Battlestar Galactica, the mid-2000s one, not the one from 1978. Both shows came out of the gate incredibly strong with really thought-provoking episodes that created mystery after mystery after mystery and drove people to watch in, and just speculate really intelligently about what was going on. Both shows were meditations on the nature of life and freedom and a lot of really heavy-duty ideas. And both shows tried with each subsequent season to expand their worlds to the extent that both shows, by the time they ended, were showing that it was 
impossible to maintain any sort of consistent logic. Certain ideas had never been followed up on. Other ideas just didn't make sense by the time it was all done. And again, in both shows, it was really hard to know who to root for. Because it, even though you had a lot of the same actors, they had changed so much. Gone from good to bad, bad to good. And that that's an interesting thing to do with your heroes. Because, well, you know, it's kind of the way things work in life as opposed to the way things work in TV. It's, it adds complexity, and that's great. But it does not necessarily make things watchable. Conventional wisdom says that both the last season of Lost and the last couple of episodes of Battlestar Galactica were a total train wreck and were not worth watching. And in fact, that the last couple of episodes of both made the entire series so much worse for the fact that they existed. And is that really what we wanted from Westworld? No. Season one of Westworld, like I said, w was really good and thoughtful and had a lot of stuff going on. And I think season two even had a lot going on that kind of worked off of season one. But let me tell you, by the time you get to season four, you're talking about minor characters having major roles. You're talking about just this mysticism and, and it just, it began to collapse in upon itself. When I watched the season finale of season four, I will say I, I, I felt like that was the end and I would be okay with it being the end. It was a decent stopping point. And I don't know what they would have done with season five, but um, it's okay that I'll never know. Maybe they'll turn it into a book or something, and if that's the case, maybe it'll get the kind of treatment in my imagination that it truly deserves. One last bit, and I always like to put a bit of disclaimer in here, um, it, because the last thing that I'd ever want to do would be insult anybody's hard work. Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, who created Westworld, and the many hundreds of talented artists and actors and production staff who created the show deserve tons and tons of credit. They all did something I personally couldn't do. And here I am with my little podcast kind of picking on them. And I know that doesn't necessarily come off as fair, but I'll say the same thing that I said in my podcast about the House of Dragons, which is that you really only have this boldness, this feeling like you have to pick on something when you do really care about it. So to the producers and creators of Westworld, you made me care about it. You did. And I'm sorry that you won't get the chance to completely fully realize your vision, but I do see where it was a smart business move. And sometimes you just have to make smart business moves. Anyway, that's about it for the Solid Signal podcast for this week. Do me a favor, like and subscribe, make me look good to my bosses. Read the Solid Signal blog, blog.solidsignal.com, and shop at solidsignal.com. That's it for the Solid Signal podcast for this week. I'll see you again next week.